morning and welcome to Rising. We've got a great show for you today. Brianna Joy Gray is back from <laughs> vacation. How was that? It was great. I feel refreshed. I feel relaxed. I didn't miss missing some of the tougher media cycles from last week, but I did miss your company and the company of all you viewers out there, so I'm looking forward to getting back into it. Wonderful. <laughs> well, so happy to have you back. Also, you should know, viewers, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties today, so if it seems like we're reading off our computers, that's uh, because the cameras are doing some interesting choices uh, this week. But why don't you take it away? All right, so new polling out. That doesn't look very good for Joe Biden's yes. presidential chances. A new poll from uh, Washington Post, ABC polling from over the weekend shows that Donald Trump is beating Biden by seven points in a general election matchup. Now, uh, most Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents surveyed want the party to nominate someone else other than Biden. And respondents were also asked if they believe that the two party leaders have, quote, mental sharpness necessary to mm -hmm. effectively serve as president. Just 32 percent believe Biden does. That's compared to Trump's 54 percent. Yeah, this is not good news for Joe Biden. Two thirds of voters, uh, of, of people who responded to the survey, saying that he doesn't have the mental acuity to be president again. Um, he the, These numbers are, are much better for Trump than I think people um, expected goes to show you that you know while while Biden did have I think a, a pretty strong performance in the midterms uh, and you know you can make the case that because of that he's the right person to preside over the Democratic mm -hmm. Party as it heads into the next election he is not a sure thing at all a lot of the country doesn't like him doesn't think he's he can be president again there's even people who said okay i supported him maybe in 2020 but this is you know this is years later and at his age it's showing and they, they're going to have no opportunity to see a potential other Democrat right. because he refuses to do any debating. Right. So I said this around midterm times that I think it wasn't fair to attribute the Democrats' relative successes at that time to Joe Biden. I think that everyone was benefited mm -hmm. by this post-row bump or voters, the majority of which want a much more moderate position on abortion than what Republicans are taking in this moment, came out to the polls. Young people voted in high numbers to try to claw back the status quo from this conservative court and the decisions that are coming out of some Republican legislatures who want a not federal abortion ban and these kinds of things. Biden cannot keep coasting on that, especially since it's him and his party that are the reason why we didn't codify Roe over the last 50 years of it actually being in the law of the land. Now, I also think what's interesting about this poll is that it's not purely an age poll. Do you think Biden is too old? It's specifically about mm -hmm. mental acuity, which is something I think Democrats have been dodging by framing this as being about age. If you say it's about age, then you can say, well, oh, Donald Trump's only a year younger than Biden. The whole political establishment is a gerontocracy. You're being unfair to Joe Biden. It's not really his age. He has a speech impediment. All these kind of arguments that we've seen trotted out. But when you really narrow down to if he appears to have the, the mental sharpness, the mental acuity to actually run, you're seeing, I think, what people are saying is that when he talks, he doesn't seem to be there. He's not taking questions from the press at the same level as his predecessors have done. And people are now getting in, 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 worried that if we leave it to the general mm -hmm. election to actually see a debate stand up, a, a debate matchup between the Republican nominee and, and, and Joe Biden, that it's going to be too late if we discover he can't actually stand right. there and hold his well, own And the anymore. quirk of the 2020 campaign, quirk, <laughs> was that he couldn't actually do a lot of right. effective campaigning because of the pandemic okay. and yeah. people were so over Trump and people were so frustrated with COVID that that all played to his advantage. That's not going to be the case this time. You know, a, a lot of uh, the survey respondents here also said, you know, there, there are issues they have with Trump. They rate him much lower than Biden on honesty and trustworthiness. Um, his numbers on that haven't really budged mm. very much in the entire time he's been like a, a political figure. Mm -hmm. um, it goes to show you that, I mean, we, you know, we talk about how many voters are frustrated with, with the choice between Biden and Trump. I mean, Hillary versus Trump, Biden versus Trump, Biden versus Trump. Figures that, you know, they're not sending their best. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, the political parties are not, are not putting up people that, that interest a, a whole lot of voters. Yeah. Now, on the Republican side, there is going to be a battle between, for, with potential Trump alternatives in the mix, like a Ron DeSantis, for instance, maybe other Nikki Haley already declared, maybe a Tim Scott, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, the, the DNC is doing everything it can to ensure that, that nothing equivalent happens on the Democratic yeah, I'm side. I'm having some pretty uh, painful 2016 flashbacks, Robbie, as we go through this new version of what we then call the Bernie blackout. Mm -hmm. Now we have um, outlets repeatedly reporting or, or not reporting on the fact that Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. have thrown their hats in the ring. Repeat, you see report after report that says that uh, Joe Biden is running uh, unchallenged or that he has no serious challenger. That's one way they get around having to acknowledge that not only does he have challengers, he has challengers with polling numbers that these conservative challengers would give their right arm for. Mm -hmm. With uh, RFK Jr. polling about 20 percent just a week after his announcement, and Marianne Williamson um, up in, what was it, the 5 percent category, which are strong numbers when you look at the other side of the aisle. Moreover, we see the Democratic Party literally rigging the primary system again, changing the order of the um, primary contest to advantage Joe Biden, who does very well in a state like South Carolina. Remember, he didn't win any primary contest in 2020 up until South Carolina and, won, and lost them pretty dramatically, coming in third, fourth, and fifth place in those early states. Um, and so now it feels like he doesn't want to give any momentum at all to his challengers, which frankly is evidence, I think, of their relative strength. And the Democratic Party knows that there's some concern here, probably because they're looking at polls just mm. like these. Well, Glenn Greenwald had this to say about the poll on Fox News. Let's watch. If you see polling data showing that 30 percent of the party is ready to back another candidate, as you say, even ones who have no campaign operation yet, that shows a lot of concern and dissatisfaction with Joe Biden. You would think if you have any respect for your voters, the last thing you would do them is to tell them, you're just gonna have to swallow this. There'll be no debating, no dissent, no opposition from you. You're gonna sit there and silently and take it. And yet that is their messaging because they believe, and I think with good reason, that Democrats at the last minute always snap into line. Hmm. I think his point about the lack of respect that it shows to voters is a really, really good one. Remember, 2016, you had two historically unlikable candidates. But the Democrats said, we're just going to push Hillary through. It's her turn. And we saw what the consequences of that were. The idea that they're behaving with the same level of hubris now is I would say it's shocking, it's galling, but it's not shocking. We've, we've seen this script before. It says to, I think, voters that we would rather have our chosen nominee than one that was chosen by the people and one that actually has a likelihood of defeating Trump. And how much can you say you care about protecting democracy, which is the Democrats' through line in this moment, their, their core argument for why it is that people should come out and turn out to the polls despite not having strong feelings about Joe Biden, strong positive feelings mm -hmm. about Joe Biden, is we have to protect our democracy. Well, if the Democratic Party is behaving in such an undemocratic way, do they really have legs to stand on? Yeah, absolutely. If I'm, you know, Biden, Democrats, et cetera, looking at this, the only, the silver lining I'm seeing is that we're still a long way out from the election. Trump has been relatively sidelined and quiet and once, if he is the nominee and he starts getting more airtime, he starts saying things, starts talking about the last election mm -hmm. and January 6th and all mm -hmm. those things that, that Republicans don't even want to talk about, most of them. Independence, it's poison for them. Um, a, a lot of people in this poll said they think Trump should face criminal responsibility for the mm -hmm. election. Um, that would be where I'd focus on. Like, the picture will get better if it's actually Trump and voters start hearing from him again. That's what I would be, that, that would, what I would use to console myself when mm -hmm. I'm trying to see the good in this. So we'll have to wait for yeah, that. Yeah, one other thing is, it, it might be interesting if the Democrats did allow more people in the field. If Joe Biden doesn't want to tangle directly with Trump at this time, we saw back in 2016 that people who took direct shots at, at Biden got, uh, sorry, at Trump got hurt. There's a world where if there are more Democrats mm -hmm. in the fray, some of them might engage with some of these Trumpian talking points in a way that basically absorbs the fire from Donald Trump, takes the hit that's necessary to take to, to bring the opponent down while leaving Biden with clean hands. So it's not even clear to me that strategically boxing out the primary the way they're doing is going to inert to his benefit. But of course, we'll be here covering it. Yes, we will. More rising right after this.